Hello and welcome to this tutorial on blogging. What is a blog? A blog is an abbreviation for a web log and it can be used for journalizing, reflecting, you can do group work, collaborative work, it allows you to uh, have your students do a little bit of uh, additional writing, maybe in a different way. They can uh, express their thoughts and so forth. There's a couple of different ways and a couple of different types uh, of blog tools. Now I'm showing Blackboard here. You can, I'm in a test class. You can actually use the blogging tool in Blackboard. And I'm going to show you that today. But there's also other blog tools out there. Another one that's part of the tool set that we have at Baker College is uh, Google has a tool called Blogger, and it's built right into the Google Apps for Education. So you can access it uh, that way and create your own blog. For the most part, you're probably going to want to use the blog features within Blackboard because you might be using it for a course. But if it would be something where maybe you wanted students to uh, create something that could last outside of their experience in the school. So after graduation, they would still have access to the material that they put in that blog. So if they wanted to keep like a journal and have access to it and share it with people outside of Baker College, that would be consideration. For purposes of our tutorial today, I'm going to demonstrate the blog tool within Blackboard 9.1. So there's a couple of different ways that you can access the blog tool. You can actually go to Users and Groups, and you can create a group. This would allow you to create a group and then assign uh, tools to that group. So I can create a group that would allow students to self-enroll or I could manually enroll students in that particular group. So if I had, let's say, 20 people in the class and I wanted to break them into five groups of four, I could do a manual enroll and allow uh, myself as the instructor to select each one of the four students that are going to go in that five groups. Or I could set it as uh, self-enroll and then the students would choose one of the groups that I would set up. So that might be a way that you may want to do that. And I'll set up just a manual enroll one. <clears throat> and so here's the create group uh, area. And you can see here that we have the blog feature. So if you just wanted to create a group and use the blog tool, you may not want a lot of these other things. So you can actually get rid of all of these things here. Whoops. Create the group. Get down to that. Notice there's a wiki, so you could do this the same way. And so I could give it a title. I could put some information in here. The group is visible to the students. The default is to yes. If you want to build a bunch of things ahead of time, maybe you want to build different groups and different blogs throughout the uh, course, you may want to have it not visible and then make it visible when you want to, but I'm going to keep it as visible. It can be a, a blog, uh, can be a graded feature or not. If you're going to make it graded, you would want to put some points in here and you'll get an alert after every so many entries if you'd like to set that up to alert you after a student participates and posts an entry. And you can also uh, use a rubric if you're going to have it as graded, but you don't have to have it as graded. If you do have it as graded, it will create a grade center column for you within Blackboard. Um, I don't know that this, frankly, is the best way to actually build a blog unless you are going to make it for individual groups. And in that case, you would want to add the users. And so you would get a list of the students that are in here and you would figure out which students you wanted to use. You would select them over here and then you would hit submit 
and you've now added those students. If you need to take somebody out, you just hit an X, then I hit submit, and I'm good to go. I have created that particular group. Now, that's probably the best way. That's probably the best way to create a group. There's the group that I just created. Um, probably the best way to create a blog if you are actually going to use it in group settings. It's a little bit more complicated because sometimes you have to turn off all those tools. If You can just leave the tools there, but they're probably going to get in the way a little bit. Another way to build a blog is to go into Course Tools, and one of your choices is Blogs, and this will allow you to create a blog right out of the gate. Create a blog. And so again, you can blog create, oops, create tool. And again, I can put some instruction in here, maybe telling the students what to do. The blog defaults to available. I can actually have it uh, be limited to the time that it's going to be available. And then here's where I make some choices. I can have it individual to all students, so it's going to be an individual blog. So essentially it's like a journal at that point. I could have it be a course blog and all students would work on the same blog. And then it can allow anonymous entries and comments. I usually take this off because I want to know who's saying things. And if I'm going to use the blog for a week or two, a short period of time, you definitely don't want monthly as your index. What you want is weekly. It makes it easier to backtrack and search for posts that have been made at various times. You can decide whether you want to allow the users to edit and delete the entries or allow users to delete the comments. And we'll talk about entries and comments here in a second. Again, you have the possibility of grading or no grading. And then when you're done, you submit. Again, if you list grade and put a point value in there, it will create a column in the Grade Center for you. So that's just as easy as um, creating a, there's my blog create tool. That's the one that I just created. So again, if you're going to use um, your class broken up into groups and you want each group to have their own blog, the first way. If you want either an individual blog or a full course, everybody together in the same blog is the second way that I showed you how to do that. As far as the blog itself, um, I'm going to just go into this one. Both of them work the same way. So usually what I do, now this would be the description here. Over here is where I'm going to get the blog details. There's going to be an index here. All course members that have posted in this blog are going to be listed here, so I can go to each member. I can actually look at the index when it's all flushed out and people have entered uh, material in here. So there's entries. A blog entry. So when people say they, they've written a blog, a blog is a website essentially. The entry is actually called a blog entry or a blog post. So somebody said, I, I wrote five blogs today. No, probably not. They probably wrote five blog entries or five blog posts. So I'm going to just click on this. And usually, as the instructor, I might um, you know, say something like, Welcome. To the blog and then each week we are going to you know whatever it is you can attach a file uh, you have the text editing bar here so you have all your toolbars you can pull a video in you can put an attachment in um, images you know whatever you need to do and again you can pull in items there so I'm going to hit post entry. So now what we have is date and time, who put it in here, and then is the entry itself. If somebody else wants to create an additional entry, they're just going to go to create blog entry. If they would like to make a comment, they would click down here and it would uh, open up a comment box. And there's not a lot you can do down here uh, other than put in your text and then you do have spell check and then they have add. I didn't put anything in, so I got an error message. Hit add. And now you can see that it shows one comment. So if you come out and go back in and you would like to see uh, what the comments are on this particular blog post, you would just click here and you would see what that one is. 
And then because I have the ability to um, edit the comments or delete the comments, that's why I have this little X. Otherwise, this would not be there if you set it to not do that. So there's a brief instruction on the blog itself and how to use the built-in tools inside Blackboard. Again, you can use it for critical thinking. You can have students work on putting their thoughts in writing. It allows you to have them work on creativity. They can build something new and they can keep adding to this. They can use it as a reflecting tool, so it can be kind of a, a journal if you wanted to have it uh, function as an individual blog. It allows you to kind of archive the history of the student's thought process or the group of students as they go through and you have posts. You're going to have this index over here and where all of the individual posts are going to be archived and you'll be able to get a list of all the students who've posted already. So from a grading perspective, it's real easy to find out who's done what. Other things that you could use this for is because of the comment feature, you can get have uh, peer feedback for your students. So you can have the assignment set up so that a student will make original posts, other students from the class and or from that student's individual group will make comments about that post. A law also allows you to do some collaboration in that group format, that first way I showed you how to set up the blog. So a lot of different uses for the blog tool feature. And I hope you find some of these uh, explanations helpful and you get some ideas for ways for you to use this tool in one of your courses. Thank you.